Hello and welcome to Reading the Gospels Together for Tuesday, June the 9th, and today, Luke 15, a great chapter with three very familiar parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. But there's something about these titles which the New International Version and other translations give these parables that is misleading. The titles are not in the original text, of course. The publishers of your Bible have put them there. And they are misleading because while the parables feature lost sheep, a lost coin, and the lost son, they are in fact about the shepherd who finds the sheep, the woman who finds the coin, and the father who welcomes the son. Let's take a look at each one to see what I mean. First, Luke introduces the parables in this way. He says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now pay attention to that intro. Each parable which comes afterwards in this chapter is addressing this situation. The first one begins with, then Jesus told them this parable. It's a response to their criticism. The second parable begins simply, or suppose. That's a continuation on the first. The third begins, Jesus continued. So they're all tied together. They build on each other. That's the first big hint on how to interpret them. Now back to the intro. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now, tax collectors and sinners is kind of shorthand for undesirables, people you shouldn't be seen with, bad company. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who were very religious and stayed well clear of such folk, would have been horrified that Jesus, who many people were following as an inspiring teacher, was attracting and hanging around with this crowd. Not only that, he eats with them. He enters into relationship with them. How could a true man of God be in such close contact with such lawbreakers? And in response, Jesus tells the parables that we'll look at now. So, a shepherd has a hundred sheep. One wanders off. The shepherd leaves the 99 in the open country and searches for the missing one. And when he finds it, He throws a party. Now, we're used to this parable, so we're not surprised by it. But a shepherd friend of mine said, no shepherd in his right mind would abandon 99 sheep to find a lost one, particularly in the wild. You'd come back and 10 more would be missing. Plus, the one who wandered off is just going to do so again. If I were that shepherd, said my shepherd friend, that sheep would have been the main course at the party. Now, that gave me real insight into the moral of the story. First of all, notice how Jesus personalizes this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep. Now, I've said before, the best way to read a parable is to put yourself in that parable. Here's Jesus doing just that. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep. And thanks to my shepherd friend, I now understand that the actions of that shepherd were unreasonable. He went above and beyond with reckless concern in order to find the lost. The Pharisees and teachers of the law, when given this scenario, would have said, No, I would not leave the 99 in the open country to find the lost one. That's ridiculous. And that's the key to the parable. God's reckless love for the lost. Why is Jesus seemingly ignoring the Pharisees and teachers of the law, who are in effect the 99 good sheep, in order to find the stray. Because that's God's reckless love in action. The lost sheep has a value far in excess of its apparent worth. The ministry of Jesus only makes sense if you understand God's love in this way. Now, second parable. A woman loses a silver coin. She turns the house upside down until she finds it. And when she does... She calls her friends and neighbors together and throws a big party. Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. So you're thinking, okay, moral of this story is if you lose something and you find it, you're happy. Well, the parable is a bit different. So you lost a $100 bill somewhere in your house. You turn the place upside down day and night until you finally find it. You call your friends and neighbors over and you throw a party in celebration. The party costs far more than the $100. People think you're crazy. But, says Jesus, that's how heaven works. The lost have a value far in excess of their apparent worth. The angels rejoice over one sinner who repents. 
a sinner with no value in the eyes of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, but great value in the light of God's reckless love. The Pharisees and teachers of the law are saying, no, no, the angels rejoice over us, not over the sinners. That's not what this parable says. A sinner with no value in the eyes of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, but has great value in the eyes of God's reckless love. And the third parable, of course, the very familiar one to us, there was a man who had two sons. Now, the man, in technical language, has the nominative case. It means he's the subject of the sentence. The man is the subject of the parable, the man with the sons. The parable is about him, not the wayward son. We focus on the wayward son, but you have to focus on the father to understand the parable. You know the story, the, son, the one son demands his inheritance early, blows it all on wine, women, and song, comes crawling back looking for a job. But remember, it isn't about him. Watch the father. That's what Jesus says. But while his son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Okay, so you're a Pharisee. You're listening to this parable. When you hear the father's reaction, your jaw drops. No self-respecting father would act this way. The worthless son has, in effect, said, I wish you were already dead. Give me what I'll get when you finally die. I want it now. And then the son blows it, comes crawling back, and the father runs to him, runs to him, and kisses him. I would have made him come crawling to my feet and then kicked his backside all the way back to where he came from thinks the Pharisee. What self-respecting father would act like this? But wait, there's more. The father said to the servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Like the shepherd, like the woman with the lost coin, the lost has been found and the celebration begins. A celebration of God's unreasonable, reckless love. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law are standing there, frowning, arms crossed, brows dark in disapproval. God's not like that, they're thinking. So Jesus, as he did in the first parable, puts them in this one too. And he casts them in the role of the disapproving older brother. The brother hears what's going on and furious, he refuses to join the celebration. Jesus continues. So his father went out and pleaded with the older son. But the older son answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you. You never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this, this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Now, just like these tax collectors that you're frowning at, they were lost, now they're found, Jesus says to the Pharisees. Just like these sinners you're muttering about, God in reckless love loves them. God, in faithful love, loves the Pharisees and teachers of the law as well. The lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, God loves them and is going to extraordinary, unreasonable lengths to win them back. But God's love is there for you too. It always has been. Won't you join the party? God loves us recklessly. Thanks be to God. Now tomorrow, Luke 16 a change of scene, and two of the trickiest parables Jesus ever tells. Read them and see if you can figure them out. We'll see you then.